Good morning, brothers and sisters. We're going to look at love for God, bringing forth obedience to God. We'll start off with just a few verses in the Old Covenant, and then we'll move some teaching over in the New Covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. And now, Israel, what does the Yahweh your God require of you but to fear the Yahweh your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him? to serve the Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Yahweh and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. Over to Deuteronomy chapter 30. But you can see that obedience to the commands of God comes out of loving God and out of fearing him. Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 through 20. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, in that I command you today to love the Yahweh your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Yahweh your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear, and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, and you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Yahweh swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. Let's go over into the new covenant. First, the words of Jesus. This is found in John chapter 14, verses 15 through 24. I'm going to read it, and then we'll go into the teaching. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I love you. You will also live. Because I live, you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. So, please hear this. There is a sense in which God is with all people. And there is a sense in which he only comes into those who love and obey him in response to his being with us. Jesus clearly says to his disciples that the Holy Spirit is with them and will be in them. The Holy Spirit was not yet in them because he had not yet been given. Jesus had not yet died, been resurrected, ascended, and then did not yet send forth the Holy Spirit to reside within us. The Holy Spirit was, uh, resided within Jesus, and so the Holy Spirit was with them because they were with Jesus, and the Spirit was in Jesus. But they were still commanded to obey Jesus. So sometimes we say that we can't obey without the Holy Spirit first being in us. Well, accor according to Jesus, that's not true. The Holy Spirit was not yet in his disciples, and yet they were obeying. I believe the power of the Holy Spirit comes alongside of us before he dwells within us. He tests us. He invites us. He encourages us. He empowers us. 
It's like we're anointed first, and then we're filled. But there's more and more and more. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He says, then he will pray the Father and give the Helper, the Spirit of Truth. Do we not see this? There's an obedience that must come. It's an obedience that comes by faith. It's an obedience that comes by grace. But it's not an obedience that comes from the Holy Spirit doing the work in us. It's a Holy, it's a Holy Spirit work on us. And why do we call him the Holy Spirit? But because he's holy and he empowers us to be holy, brothers and sisters. Here he's actually not even called the Holy Spirit, but the Spirit of Truth. He's simply the Spirit, and we then put other names on him to signify what kind of Spirit, who is he? But the Spirit of Truth, and so I contend with you, brothers and sisters, that the truth of God is that we must obey. He helps us, but we still must obey. He doesn't do it for us. In fact, he starts off outside of us, and we must love and obey him even before he comes to dwell within us, at least according to the words of Jesus Christ here in the Gospel of John. Then he makes his home in us, causing us to go deeper with further love and obedience. Amen. Let's go on to Romans. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Okay, Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law, that is of Moses, could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it does not submit to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ dwells in you, the spirit, uh, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Paul here plainly is speaking that we have no condemnation if we are in Christ. And if we are in Christ... We do not live according to the flesh. Our minds are not set on the things of the flesh. If we are in Christ, the Holy Spirit in us helps us to submit to the righteous requirement of the law. We do what is right. We don't do what is wrong because we love God. We don't fulfill the lust of the flesh, as it says in Galatians, but by the Holy Spirit, we live in holiness. That's why he's called the Holy Spirit. Now again, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. There is no condemnation if you are in Christ, brothers and sisters. Killing the deeds of the flesh and living the deeds of righteousness, the righteous requirement of the law, through union with the Spirit of God. Going from Romans 8 over to Romans 13. Romans 13, verses 8 through 14. I'm trying to contend against those who say love is everything and there is no obedience required in love. Romans 13, starting at verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there be any other commandment, 
are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. So again here, we must obey love. Love does not sin against our neighbor. Love keeps the commands of God. Love, brothers and sisters, is the fulfillment of the law. It is by putting on the Lord Jesus Christ that we do not live in sin, but in righteousness. Paul says here plainly in Romans chapter 13, brothers and sisters, that if we walk in Christ, we do not walk in lawlessness. We do not walk in the lust of the flesh. And so love is equated with obedience. The two are synonymous in the sense that love obeys God. Love takes care of our fellow man. Love does not sin against our fellow man. Love does not covet what they have. Love does not envy what they have. Love does not want to take what they have. Love does not want to sin against them, hurt them, lie against them. Love does not want to kill them. Love doesn't want to take their spouse. Love keeps the commandments of God. Love takes care of other people. Our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed because we're walking more and more in love. And Jesus is sooner to, to reappearing. <clears throat> we put on the armor of light. We cast off darkness. We obey God. We don't disobey him. I hope this makes sense, brothers and sisters. If you love God, you obey his commands. And in so doing, you also love your neighbor. Amen. Moving on from Romans, moving away from Paul, we go over to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. I'm just trying to show you that in the entire New Covenant Scriptures, love is equated with obedience. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So brothers and sisters, we have a reward for our love, a reward for our obedience, a reward for taking care of other people, especially the saints. But we must continue in that love, in that obedience, by patience, by faith, enduring to the end, or else, what? We shall lose our reward. And what is our reward other than eternal life with Jesus? Again, once saved, always saved is not true. Eternal security is a lie. We must persevere to the end in loving obedience toward God and toward each other. Amen. Going on from Hebrews chapter 6, let's look over at 1 John. 1 John, just trying to show you that all of the apostles speak with the same voice. 1 John, chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. You've probably heard this many times. 1 John, chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So we know that God is the source of love. And as Jesus said and Paul, we know that love is outside of us and wants to come in. We start to obey God, and so he then comes in. There is an obedience that happens before he comes to dwell within us, according to John. The Gospel of John, where Jesus speaks. But there is an obedience that continues and deepens as the Holy Spirit moves from outside of us to inside of us. As the love of God comes from outside of us, working on us by grace externally, changing our behaviors to internally changing our heart. 
He pours his love into our hearts, brothers and sisters, and we therefore start to love each other because of his love in us. Going over to 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, it says, For this is love of God, that we keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. So again, synonymous, brothers and sisters, by definition, this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. What more shall we say? Let's go over and get ready to close. We'll look in Jude and then Revelation. Jude, there's only one chapter, so Jude chapter one. <laughs> Pretty obvious, right? Verses 20 through 25. But you, beloved, and that's important, beloved, not that we first loved God, but that he first loved us. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with everlasting joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Jude calls us beloved. He tells us, beloved, we're loved by God, to build ourselves up on the holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, some say this is praying in tongues, and I do pray in tongues, but I believe it's more so praying in agreement with him. If the Spirit is holy, we must pray by the holy faith. So we pray in agreement using not only praying in our spirit, meaning praying in tongues, but praying with our mind, praying with words that match with the scriptures, that match with the heart of God. Now, this is how we keep ourselves in the love of God, by praying in agreement with his spirit. Always, brothers and sisters, we pray in agreement. We confess with our mouth. We testify to the blood of Christ, to the working of his washing, that we agree that we are holy as he is holy, and we walk it out. And then we reach out to others, trying to save them by God's grace through faith. And we trust him to keep us. It says he is able to keep us from stumbling to present us faultless. Amen. Because God is our Savior, He alone is wise. The glory and majesty and dominion and power are His now and forever. Amen. Let's close it out by looking in Revelation. Chapter 2. I've given a whole video on this. It was one of the first videos I ever taught on YouTube. These verses are very near and dear to my heart. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Brothers and sisters, we must return to our first love. Do you not remember what it was like when you first came to love Jesus? When you first came to hear that you were beloved by him? Do you not remember what it was like to come into just an immediate obedience if indeed you were saved, born again, born from above, born of the Spirit? You turned away from all known sin. You were hungry for him. You spent a lot of time praying. Perhaps you read the Bible or perhaps instead of reading the Bible, perhaps you listened to lots of preaching and teaching. Perhaps you sang lots of praise songs to the Lord. You were hungry and thirsty to find songs that gave him thanks and praise or you made up your own. There are all kinds of ways you first loved him. But are you still loving him or have you fallen from your first love? You can give to this ministry on PayPal under Joshua Gravis, J-O-S-H-U-A-G-R-A-V-I-S. Or you can write to P.O. Box 5142 Woodbridge, W-O-O-D-B-R-I-D-G-E, Virginia, V-I-R-G-I-N-I-A, zip code 22194. You can also find Joshua Gravis, me, over on Facebook. I do live videos there whereas I do pre-recorded videos like this here on YouTube. I love y'all, and may we each be blessed by God in Christ. Acts 3.26 says that God sent Jesus to us to bless us by turning us away from our sins. So may we have loving obedience toward God, turned away from sin and toward him in true righteousness by grace through faith unto obedience. Bye, everybody.